Hello, this is another video from the Angry Photographer here. I'm going to teach you how to become a master of light. Now, once you've mastered the flash, once you've mastered your camera, you're going to start to have to become a master of light. That means that there are four things you need to learn how to do or how to twist. You need to have devices that either create light, direct light, reflect light, or diffuse light. Experiment around with even the stuff in your house. You see these old units here? These are three of these back in those old projector TVs. I actually take the lens elements out of these or use a single one of these. These are actually AR coated lenses. You usually see these huge old projector TVs by the roadside. Break them open with a hammer, rip those out, take out the elements, use them in your photography. I've used them endlessly. Here is an extremely expensive rotary motor used in a technical electronic device I got at a UK auction for basically nothing. Use it in time exposure, shots. Let me actually take the light off here so you can see. Use these in uh, time exposure shots using reflectors. Angle up here so you can see off of products. On a time, this looks like nothing to you right now, but on a time exposure, I'm able to do miraculous stuff with that. Also, using ambient light, I'm able to create and paint rainbows using a high aperture, slow shutter, actually drawing a narrow beam of uh, white light and actually paint with rainbows. Use brass sheets like this as uh, sunlight reflectors. Here's another trick you should try at home. Get it positioned off your flash by about three to four inches. You can experiment with the distance. Experiment with doing some portraits using small bubble wrap like this about three to four inches from your, your, uh, your flash head. Okay. Now, if you're thinking to me, Ah, well, professionals don't use shit like that. Bullshit. Bullshit. I have been on location of product shots, talking about $100,000 product shots, from uh, places like Rolex and Rolls Royce, where some of the best photographers in the world, I mean, they're whipping out uh, paper towels to cover up just a little spot of light. I mean, they'll use a dirty baby diaper if the reflection off of that thing will give them the perfect image. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Photoshop. Obviously, of course, things have gone more that way now than they used to be back in the days of film, before digital editing. But there are a lot of simple trips and ticks like trips, tips and tricks like this that don't involve post gang raping your photograph in pho Photoshop, okay? Bubble wrap, stuff like this, lenses, reflectors, diffusers, things that create light. And they have to be warned on using laser light. The quickest way to actually destroy your DSLR sensor is actually getting direct laser light into the DSLR sensor. Using stuff that st people have never thought of because of, you know, my numberless years of researching field theory. Stuff that was discovered ages ago by Michael Faraday. Called the Faraday Effect. You want to see something fascinating you've never seen before? Something that no photographer has ever used before? Let's take a look at it. If I can get it up here safely. Which may not be so easy. I don't want to get the camera too close. But this is a gigantic $800 neodymium iron boron. At the correct angle, this, based upon the Faraday effect, will twist and torque light. It's especially apparent with coherent light. It is a gigantic, dangerous, if you got your fingers wedged between two of these, it would actually take your fingers off. Here are a pair of extremely heavy copper plates. You can see how heavy they are off over here to the side. See as I actually drop them onto the magnet. 
You see that? It's not an air cushion. See that? And they are just heavy copper sheets. There's actually two of them taped together. But that diamagnetic electro repulsive or Lorentzian force is acting on this copper from the centrifugal reciprocating hyperboloid of what is the precessional nature of the coherency in this magnet because a magnet is a reciprocating precessional hyperboloid which I'm the first person in the world to discover. Anyway, I thought you'd think that's fascinating. Most people have never seen that before. Take these heavy copper sheets and drop it on your magnet. The point being is that I can actually shoot light across here or I can bring light in across this magnet and distort it. It's fascinating. Most people have never seen that on Earth before. It's called the Faraday Effect. And as a side note on this about mastering light, because you need to start collecting, you know, creators of light, directors, reflectors, diffusers, because if you think professionals don't use this household shit to reflect light, to create special effects, you are 10,000% dead wrong, because I've seen them do it, I've seen them do it on $100,000 product photography shots, they absolutely do use it. And the ferro cell invention that you actually saw, saw me uh, show before, as a side note here, um, the uh, inventor of that up north named Tim, he's come up with a new invention. And uh, it's so advanced and it's so simple, you can go to his website and see it in action or on YouTube. Just type in ferro cell. US and you'll actually get a demonstration of it, but without going into details of what it is, it's going to change the entire face of uh, communication on Earth. It makes the shit you see in Star Trek look like the Stone Age by comparison. It's going to make the fastest optical network on Earth, used by governments and uh, small private networks, local area networks, fiber optic networks, it's going to make that shit look like the Stone Age by comparison. His ultra simplex invention based upon the nature of twisting and torquing light by using a, a centrifugal magnetic dispersion of light so that it's unfazed and dispersing it out is going to change the entire face of everything that we understand about communication. Uh, very soon, based upon his invention, which is another invention uh, that I showed you earlier, his ferrocell invention, where you could actually see reciprocating magnetic fields underneath two lenses. His device is a communications device, and it's going to change the face of everything. Uh, obviously, that isn't directly in relation to the photography that I'm talking about here, but I thought you guys would like an insight on that. He revealed it at the National Photonics Convention a few months ago. And uh, he's a marvelous inventor. I have all the respect in the world for him. And uh, it's uh, related to light, and I thought you'd think that was fascinating. If you actually understood what's going on and how simple it is, his device is almost as simple as a post-it note. Not literally, but almost so. But what it does is going to change the face of everything. As so far as communication, Everything else, I mean, everything that we have now, the fastest stuff that we have now is going to look like Flintstone Stone Age bullshit by comparison. And it's all ready to blow up. If you want to do more research on this, you can do a Google search on Vortex Antenna or Vortex Communication. It's uh, about Vortex nature of uh, near-infinite data transmission along with near-infinite redundancy. So imagine near-infinite data transmission speeds with near-infinite redundancy. In other words, if you scramble 90% of the signal, you still have 100% of the signal redundantly present within the remaining 10%. That is just absolutely fascinating, folks. It is fucking fascinating. Um, this isn't uh, your balls dropping off and rolling down the street. It's rolling down the street and falling in the gutter and you falling to pieces. It's just amazing technology. And it's already here now. It's his invention. 
I can't wait for him to reveal it to the world. Uh, he's a fascinating inventor. And uh, I had to talk about this on the end because some of you that are interested in light and data communication and transmission, um, go to his uh, YouTube website, ferrocell.us. He only gives you a few seconds to look at this new invention, um, but it's already out there. Um, it hasn't been dispersed yet, but I mean, his invention is already proven. And uh, he's just giving a brief intro of what it is, and it's extremely simple. So, Anyway, I had to talk about that, even though it is not directly photography related. I thought you would think it was fascinating. And uh, here basically we have an $800 filter effect for your camera. A gigantic, dangerous neodymium iron boron. Oh, which, by the way, when I stoop over this and experiment with it, it hurts my eyes. Kind of like being out in the sun all day long. Stooping over this thing and experimenting, it hurts your eyes. Kind of like you've been out in the sun, bright sun, walking on the beach. I can actually feel it right now. I've been so close to it right now, I'm surprised it hasn't messed with the camera. I'm going to scoot the camera back a little bit. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this fascinating little video, drop me a buck or two, or tell me to go screw myself. Whatever makes you happy. Thanks for watching.